Today we will answer the question, can you simulate other processors? Now Linus Tech Tips did a similar video a while back with kind of being the conclusion. I want to run these tests myself because I want my own numbers and before I bought my Pentium G3258 I used my i5-4670K to simulate it by dropping two processing cores and changing the clock speed to my liking. Now we will actually look at the differences that happen inside and the architecture between a Core i5, Core i3, and Pentium Intel processors because in theory I guess either we would get the same results within my margin of error or slightly increased performance within or between the different processors. Now I will simulate processors under these couple circumstances. One, they have to be both either AMD or Intel. Two, they have to be of the same architecture or generation in our case Haswell, but I do actually see where you could kind of try to find the differences between the two architectures. And in three, our case they have to have the same variables we can change. So between my i5-4670K, my Pentium G3258, and my friend Jacob's brand new i3-4170. Actually it's mine because I bought it until he pays me for it. It's kind of mine. <coughs> so we have to keep as many things the same as we can. So with my i5-4670K, we have to disable two processing cores and change the clock speed to 3.7 gigahertz. Took me a minute there. And on the Pentium, we overclocked to 3.7 GHz, and lastly, on the Intel i3-4170, with the unchangeable 3.7 GHz, we just disable hyper-threading. So now all three processors are running at 3.7 GHz dual cores. First I looked at the temperatures, idle, and then I ran Cinebench R15. So for the i5-4670K idle, it was 33 degrees Celsius, and under load it was 49 degrees Celsius, which had the lowest temperature out of the three. The i3-4170 idle was 31 degrees Celsius, and under load it was 53, and the pending was also 53 under load, but the idle was 32, so I believe these were all pretty much the same. The Pentium I could see being a little bit hotter because of having to be overclocked. And the scores of Cinebench are as follows. The i5 got a 267. This actually, this is kind of interesting. The i3 got a 262, which is a five point difference. And the Pentium got a 244. Now, that's like an 18 difference between the Pentium and the i3 and a five point difference between the i3 and the i5. But I think this is interesting. Now we ran a couple of games, Shadow of Mordor just because, Tomb Raider, even though I know this is mainly a GPU benchmark, and Bioshock Infinite, which is a fun and good looking game, and also a couple others, so Skyrim and Minecraft. But I believe those first three titles are going to be most important. And the specs of the test bench are as follows. For the CPU, we have that changing variable being the i5, the i3, or the Pentium, which are all 3.7 GHz dual core once again. Our video card will be the MSI GTX 970. It has not been overclocked. 16 GB of Patriot Viper RAM, and we have Antec Formula 7 thermal compound, and for the cooler, we have the Intermax ETS T40 CPU cooler. Also, my monitor is at 70 Hz, so that's what VSync will cap at. So Shadow of Mordor, 1080p Ultra with FXAA. So the max for the Pentium and the i3 are both 188, which is pretty cool. And then the i5 max was 255, so that was the only difference there. For the average, they both were about 70, right above 70, even if it's only 0.4 more. And the minimums were about 32 to 34. Now with Tomb Raider at 1080p and ultimate settings, we saw exactly the same stuff except for the Pentium. So the maxes for the i3 and i5 were 70 FPS, but the Pentium was at 72 even though I had VSync on, small error, and the averages were all 70 and the minimums were 68, 68, and 67.8. Bioshock 11, 1080p on Ultra, DX11 for the benchmark. All three got crazy maxes, so that the Pentium with the lowest maximum was like 470, but to keep the graph from going too crazy, I just put 150. The minimums, the Pentium did worse, i5 did right above that, and the i3 actually got better frame rates right there. 
Skyrim seemed to be ultra and without any mods, running around hills during snow, and I was west of Windhelm. I5 stays at 70 FPS 98% of the time, drops to about 67 at minimum while in combat sometimes, and the I3 stays at 70 most of the time, one time dropped to 60 and went right up and went right back up, but that was upon loading in a new town. Now the I3 stayed at 70 most of the time, but one time dropped to 60, but the Pentium will average at about 70 but hit 60 sometimes while in combat, and once even dipped to 50, and they were all running around in the same part. Minecraft at 1080p, 16 chunks on fantasy with smooth lighting, opt to find only no other mods. So with anti-astropic filtering we have 16x, and with anti-aliasing we have 16x to make the game look as good as we can, but actually it's just pixels, so I don't know how much that really matters quality-wise. i5 got 120 to 140 FPS, averaging falling down to 80 when loading new chunks, and goes as high as 180 and beyond, and goes 400 plus when looking at the sky or the ground. Same exact story with the i3. Now the Pentium is where it gets different. 100 to 120 average, falling to 60 a couple of times, didn't feel as smooth as the other two, which was kind of sad. Now, the, the temperature after gaming was 53 degrees Celsius on the i5, 56 degrees Celsius on the i3, Three, and on the Pentium we had 55 degrees Celsius, which again might have been from the overclock, but I don't know. I'm a little bit disappointed with the Pentium now. The, actually, the changes could even be inside with the cache amounts. That could have been a big difference within these processors. Now, also, the architecture seems like it kind of stays the same between the Pentium to i3 to i5 to i7 to Xeon with just changing features, the i3 with its hyper-threading, i5 with its two extra processing cores and turbo boost, and i7 with both i with both hyper-threading and turbo boost, and the i7 going from four cores to eight cores. Now, again, it could have just been the cache because, or just between my, or just, that was all inside my margin of error because where sometimes it seemed like the i3 was winning but the, all the benchmarks were kind of weird. Cinebench actually did show, uh, but that might include cash amounts, which would make the difference there. But now what? You know, I have an idea. Now that we kind of know we can sort of get a similar score, at least you saw between these benchmarks, now we can test Intel's integrated graphics. Yes, the Pentium has Intel's 4000 graphics, the i3 has 4400 and my handy dandy i5 has 4600 graphics. Now I know they're, they all pretty much are terrible, but there has to be a difference somewhere. So we're gonna test that next time. Oh yeah, and side note, I'm almost out of thermal paste. So drop a like if you would like to show your support or show that you wanna see the next episode so I can go out and buy more Formula 7 or to even get some Arctic Silver for our next test because I'm almost out of thermal compound as it is. Get subscribed as well so you know when my video comes out about the i3, Pentium, and i5 going head to head to head. I hope you like this video. I certainly like making it. Bye.